Hi, and welcome to this Noodle tutorial. My name is Johan, and in this video we'll continue building out our simple survey app. Today we will customize another built-in node, namely the checkbox. We will learn how we can add animations or transitions between different visual states, and how we tell a node to not listen to click or touch events. First, let's look a bit more in detail at what we will be building. We already have the header and this button section from the previous video, so we will focus on how to create these custom checkboxes, and how we can get them to animate nicely between the checked and unchecked state. We will also see how we can use margins and horizontal alignment to get this more jumbled looking layout. So before we move ahead and start building out our second page here, I want to create a new text style and it's the styling of this question here that I want to save as a text style, since I am going to reuse this style on the other pages. So let's click on the text node to bring up the properties panel. We can see that it originally had been a body text style, but we have overridden some of the values here like the font size for example. I want to save these changes in a new text style, so I'll click the plus here and fill in a name. Let's call it title. And when I click create, a new text style with the current text style properties of this button will be saved as a new style. Let's do a refresh here and we can see the newly created style in use. Okay, so let's navigate to our step two page in the preview window by clicking the button here and then select the page component in the components panel. If you recall from the little design walkthrough in the beginning, we're going to have another question on this page. So let's create a text node that can hold that. Let's place it in the page node and then let's use that new textile that we just created. The question is going to be, what is your favorite type of noodles? Okay, now let's add a group where I will put the main content of this page. Let's call it content container. Remember in part one of this series, we created this button section component that contains the back and next buttons. I want to use that component here. So let's add that below the content container like this. Very nice. So now we get to the meat of this video, creating our own custom checkboxes. If you remember from the design overview, these will be circular and grow slightly in size when we check one of them. Let's find the checkbox node in the node picker by searching for it like this. And here it is. So let's bring that into our UI by clicking on it and then dragging it into the content group. And there it shows up in the preview. Let's make a copy of this one and place it below the first checkbox. So yeah, they look nothing like our end result, but we will work on that. But first let's give this top checkbox a bit of margin. And then let's use the content containers align and justify content property to center the checkboxes vertically. Let's delete these checkboxes and start working on our custom ones. I'm going to have several of these, so making it into a component from the start is probably a good idea. So let's click here and create a custom checkbox. Now let's add that normal checkbox to our component here and place it in the group. Let's add one of these custom checkboxes so that we can see what we're doing in the preview window. And then I'm just gonna do a quick refresh here and navigate back to the uh, step two page and then let's go back into the custom checkbox. Okay, so we can see here that the group that lays out my checkbox takes up 100% of the available width and height, and I just want it to take up the width and height of its content, so let's change that. Next, I want to make the checkbox into a circle. So in the property panel for the checkbox, let's find the corner radius and set that to 100 pixels. And now we have a small circle, so let's make that bigger by changing the width and height. 
that's nice and big, but I want the border to be blue, so let's also update the border color. Next, let's work on the label. I want it to be inside the circle and not next to it like it is now. And the way we solve that is maybe not so self-evident. What we'll do is we will disable the label here and then let's create a text node that's going to become my new label. So let's put it below the checkbox and then let's change its position to be absolute inside of the group node. And now if we center the text horizontally within the text node and then center the actual text node vertically in the group, we get the label nicely in the middle of my circle checkbox. The text color of the label should be blue and the rest of the style is okay. What if I now check this checkbox? Well, it looks like this, so not so good. Let's fix it. I'll select the checked state of the checkbox from the drop down here. And then first, let's disable the icon because we don't want that at all. And then the rest actually looks okay, but let's make it slightly bigger when it's checked. So we'll change the width and height here. When I go from the checked state to the unchecked or neutral state, I want the properties to transition or animate between their values. So let's click the transitions button here and enable transitions for all properties. Now all of these properties like the border style, the dimensions and so on will animate when the visual state is changed. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But notice how it only transitions or animates from the neutral state to the checked state, but not when we go from the checked state to neutral. Let's enable that as well by having the neutral state selected here and then enabling transitions on all properties here. Now it looks very nice in both directions. Unfortunately, the label doesn't change when I check the checkbox, and since it's not part of the checkbox, I can't use the checkbox's visual states to easily have the label update. To solve this, I need to use a states node. You might remember that we used the states node in the first video to control how the header updates, and now we will use one to control the visual state of the text node here, that's our new label. I'll create two states checked and unchecked. The only value or property I want to change depending on the state is the text color. So let's add a value for that. It should be of type color and in the checked state it should be white and in the unchecked state the text color should be the primary blue color. So let's connect the text color value from the states node to the color of the text style here in the text node. And now the color of the text is white because we are in the checked state. But if I change the state to the unchecked, it's blue. All right, so this state should change depending on if the checkbox is checked or not. And that is a property that I can get out of the checkbox. So let's use a condition node. A condition node will take a Boolean input, which is what the check property is from the checkbox, and then send out a signal if the condition is true or a different signal if it's false. And anytime the condition changes, a new signal will be sent from the condition node. So let's hook this up. The check property from the checkbox node to the condition on the condition node, and then from the condition node to the states node, the on true signal should go to the to checked action, and the on false signal should go to the to unchecked action. And now, when I click the checkbox in the preview window, we see that the text color changes. Super nice. All right, so I want to create a few of these custom checkboxes, and I will want all of them to have different labels. So to be able to set the label here, I need to have a component inputs node. I'll make a port for the label and connect that to the text property of the text node. So now if I go back to my step two page here and select the custom checkbox, I now have a property to set the label. So let's set it to, for example, Udon. That looks really nice. So let's add a few more checkboxes by copying this one and pasting it into the group. 
Okay, so that's a total of five checkboxes. So let's add one more because there will be six options in the end. And now the new checkboxes are just stacked on top of each other vertically, which is not how the design looks, if you remember. So let's head back to the custom checkbox component again and make a few changes. First, I'm going to add some more ports on the component inputs node because I want to be able to set some of the layout properties on these components. So let's add margins left, right, top, and bottom. And then I also want the align X property. And then let's connect all of these to the group here. Okay, so let's go back to the step two page. My designer friend has supplied me with margin and alignment values for each of these checkboxes. So I'm just going to follow the cheat sheet they gave me and just put in all the values to get the layout my designer friend desires. You can of course play around with your own values for the margins and horizontal alignment here and create your own layout if you're following along in your own Noodle project. Let's play around with the checkboxes a bit and uh, also change the preview window size to just see how things are behaving. That's kind of fun, I think. But let's change all the labels so that they're all different options. So I'm gonna start here with putting in spaghetti. And I missed the H, but let's continue and then some egg noodle. Then some rice noodles. And here I'm going to actually force a line break by hitting the return key, which is also what I did on the egg noodle option. And then some ramen and finally some soba noodle. There's one more thing I want to fix. If you look here, when I click on the text, you can see that the checkbox is not selected and instead the text is highlighted. And that's not how I want it to behave. I want the checkbox to be selected even when I click the text. So let's fix this now. I'll go to my custom checkbox component and then select the text node. Next, let's find the pointer events mode property and change that to explicit and then uncheck the pointer events en enabled property. What I just did was to tell the text node to not care about pointer events like a mouse click or a touch event. So now when I try again, I click on the text and the pointer event goes directly through to the checkbox. And let's just click around a bit to enjoy how fun this is. Last thing in this video, let's add a few navigation nodes. And let's start with just one so that we can get back to the step one page. I'll select step one as the target page for this node and then connect the secondary button's click event to the navigate action. Then let's copy this navigate node and change the target page to step three, and then connect the primary click signal to the navigate action. Let's try that in the preview. Go back to step one, nice, the header updated and everything. And now let's go to step two here, and finally to step three. In the next video, we'll build out a very cool slider for this page. Here we are at the end of this video. We did a fairly advanced customization of a checkbox, 
learned how to enable transitions between visual states, like when the checkbox gets checked and unchecked, and we had a quick look at how to disable pointer events on a node. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this tutorial useful and that I'll see you in the next one. Happy noodling!